before our eyes. Especially when Chinese and Russians are sitting together. I'm thinking about Ezekiel, I'm thinking about Daniel, and I'm thinking about the tiny horses that can go over the mountains, not the heavy equipment, don't worry about that. And we can wake up and in the morning you can have a totally different situation. How about that? Only God. So what you and I need, we need peace. And as a Christians, it should be reflected in our lives in such a way that communities should be able to see it, what's happening in your and my life. When it trembles, when things are falling down, they should be able to point to a Christian and say, well, look at that peace that this fellow and that lady has. Why is that so? And you and I can put a big smile and say, it is the Lord. Amen? So uh, let's go first to the scripture I'm going to read well-known scripture it's not Easter it's not the resurrection yet but John chapter 20 and verse 19 through 21 which gospel John. John thank you for paying attention this last week God was reminding and thrilling us especially on Wednesday night We've been talking with some people from Sacramento, and one church in Sacramento is bringing, right now experiencing revival, not too far from the airport, in Natomas. The name of the church is Real Life Church. Uh, two services, so right now they're starting third service, uh, running over 900 people already. And I know the guy who started, now he's a new pastor there, one of our brothers from here. Now he attends that church as we directed him that way. So we have missionaries all over. And he was saying how God is moving. People are being touched and healed. And as I'm listening to that, I say, oh God, give us a time. How about that? Just bless us with night. Mm -hmm. There'll be something. You know that? So you just never know. It's on every side. Of Lake County, so it's coming. I'm ready. Are you ready? Are you asking God for that type of revival? But it starts in your and my heart. So here we are, verse 20, chapter 20, and verse 19. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. Jesus came and he stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands <coughs> and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And look at verse 21. And again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Thank God for his word. And I will have a tiny sip, maybe. So we don't have a challenge. Back to the sound. <laughs> How about that? All right, that sounds good. We need the Word of God, because when you read the Word of God, your faith rises up. And I want to be strong every day of the week, not only when we are together. Together it's easier, but things are happening every hour, each day. So let's look a little bit into our world right now. Number one, it seems that there is no peace today. When I see the buildings falling down in Ukraine, I just can't believe that that's 23. When I see, when I see innocent schools, hospitals falling down, 
I ask the questions why? We go to the airports, people are like crazy, crisscrossing, running back and forth. Many of them are agitated because planes are late. You get on those planes and planes are like sardines. <coughs> it seems like every time I take a plane, my knees are almost touching the head of the guy in front of me. I'm saying, what's happening? Those spaces are getting shorter and shorter. Looks like there's no room for the legs. Suddenly you hear the crying kids and people are coughing to the right and left. You say, oh gosh, what's going on? What we experienced this week, it seems like we assume that you are older, perhaps that's the time when maybe you will go to the glory, but a younger one, our hair are standing up and we're saying, what's going on, how come? We look even into the church world, though we are thrilled that some churches are experiencing revival, but overall, COVID brought very interesting situation in many, many of our churches, but all over. Challenging situations like this. So on one side, we wonder what's happening and we say there's no peace. On the other side, as believers, we are excited and we say, wow, look at this. All of those pages, even the words of Jesus in the Gospels are being fulfilled right before our eyes. We are on the right track. Glory to His name. But we still live in this world. You still breathe. You still make decision to praise His holy name. You wake up this morning and say, I'm going to put clothes and I'm going to drive to the church. I don't care about other people, but I want to be in the presence of the Lord. I want to be there. <coughs> Many people ask, how can I have a peace in the midst of the storm? Hey, how can I be like David? We just heard about a young kid on last Sunday who always was consistent. And I said, why? Because he was exercising his faith. He learned his Sunday school of the sheep. He was putting those things, those basics into practice. Do you practice the word of God? Do you and I practice our walk with the Lord? Do we put our faith into action in our everyday life. That's why he was not surprised when the lion came. He was not surprised when the Goliath stood in front of him. He actually was righteously agitated. How can you stand and do nothing? And yet the church was all in the armor, ready to fight. But the words brought disaster. The words of the enemy brought fear into their lives. We as believers don't live in fear. We live by faith. Hallelujah. We don't live with what our eyes see. But we live according to the word of God. And the word of God does not change. And somebody say, Amen. 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 My God is bigger than a child in your life. Jesus can sleep in the middle of the storm. David can be confident in every situation in his life. What's the answer? My father, grandfather was a young one. One of the greatest preachers that we had in that season. And I told you the other day. And yet he was dying with total confidence in his heart. 
You say, what? He's able to say, my spirit, I give into your hands and takes the last breath and goes into the presence of the Lord. You explain this to me. The answer is why? It is Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus still saves and Jesus still heals and Jesus still transforms our lives. So somebody say, Amen. Amen. How is our relationship with Him? How is our relationship with the Creator of the lake? I reminded and I told you already in the beginning of the church. I reminded someone this last week that some of the things in our life, there are things in our life that we simply will never know. And it's very difficult for my brain and your mind to have that kind of answer. You say, what? You say, you're too simplistic. You are naive. I said, no, I make a total choice and conscious choice to stand on the Word of God. And there are things like passing away that we just simply don't understand. So here we are, this first day of the week, and we are together here. And Jesus reminds us about the very interesting words. He says, peace be with you. Many church, churches in the middle, sometimes in the beginning, sometimes at the end, they share that phrase one with another and turn around to one another and they greet one another with, the word, with those words, peace be with you. What's going on here? Here we have our Messiah and he is saying to his disciples right now and he is greeting them and he is telling them these things. Think for a moment, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, he is greeting his beloved ones and he tells them, peace be with you. It's the only time <clears throat> it's the only time recorded in a scripture those words of Jesus and it's very interesting that right here at this very moment he repeats twice the same words peace be with you of course, verse 21 concludes, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. But it starts with that peace, peace be with you. Wow! Why is that so important? Why are we stopping here? Why are we even reading that simple phrase here this morning? Remember, it is Jesus' appearance after the resurrection. Jesus is alive. The cross is over. And I thank God this morning for the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he is no more on the cross. He is alive. He is sitting right now on the right hand of the Father. He intercedes on your and my behalf. God is aware of your life. God is aware of my life. God knows your name this morning. Somebody say, man. <laughs> and here is Jesus after the resurrection, after the cross, after paying the debt for you and for me, that today we can freely raise our hands, raise our voices and say, I praise you, my Father. Father in heaven, you are my daddy. Hallelujah. I can call the God of creation in that intimate relationship with him. Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus gave his life. And here is Jesus. He just comes to the walls and he says the first words, peace be with you. Peace 
be with you. And again, I want to remember, as you are listening right now, it is after the resurrection. Why he didn't say this before the resurrection? He was talking not to live in fear. But we have no record that he would greet his disciples by saying, peace be with you. When Isaiah prophet speaks about those last days of our Lord Jesus Christ, that famous chapter, chapter 53, when he prophesies about the Messiah's death, he writes in those words, that's Isaiah 53, and verse 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us what? Peace was on him. One more time. The punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed we hear the last sentence frequently as we pray one for another by his wounds we are healed just like i received the salvation i received in my faith the healing that jesus already took upon himself for you and for me so as long as I have breath, I pray for the supernatural, I pray for the healing. But right before that, he says that the cross, the punishment, brings us peace. Our Lord is called the Lord of Peace. But I'm looking at the scripture again, and I'm almost thrilled right now. Because peace only comes after the atonement was made. After the cross, you can receive a full peace right now. It was only after our Lord Jesus died on the cross and after he rose that peace could be given up. And it's very interesting because the Isaiah's prophecy here, he doesn't say, our peace. That's what you hear in English. Our peace. But it says, our shalom. How many heard that word, that word, shalom? And here it is. You say, wow. Well, here is Messiah. And he's speaking to his disciples. Here is Jesus after. He rose up, and you know what? He doesn't say peace, but he says shalom, Allah, in our original language. And that's what it means when we translate peace with you, and you hear only one word, peace be with you. And you say, wait a minute, does a shalom mean peace yeah but there is a difference and that's the difference that I'm concentrating this morning upon in a moment I want to conclude with prayer but I believe that God is stirring up our hearts as you hear the meaning of the word shalom there is a difference that shalom it's more they're just the word peace that we translate into English or any vernacular for that matter. Because why? And I'm not going to dwell on each word, but I will tell you and I'm going to count right now. Shalom means safety. Number two, shalom means rest. Shalom means prosperity. How many of you are so hungry and afraid of the word prosperity? But prosperity in reality means a little bit better. 
God wants you to be better this morning than you were last night. God wants you to be stronger this morning right now than when you were when you woke up. God wants you to be stronger right now in every area of your life, even the finances. We will never accomplish our rule if you will not prosper in your everyday life. Don't be afraid of the word prosper. Say, praise God that he is making me better today than I was yesterday. Use your resources for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Today is the day of salvation. Today, when I say shalom, I'm telling you, you may prosper. Number four, wholesome, wholeness. You don't want to be put in pieces. Uh, how many people, how many people, even Christians, live 75% as believers, but 25% is the whole. There's no Lord there. There's no God there. <coughs> and they constantly struggle. When someone says the blessing shalom, it means wholeness. I'm asking God to bring wholeness into your life. Number five, welfare. There's nowhere in the scripture, even when it talks about being poor in the spirit, you have to understand correctly, but it nowhere tells you to be a beggar on the street and beg for money or beg for the piece of bread. God takes care of you. How much we sing that song? I think we did find it the other Sunday. God takes care of you. Hallelujah. God will take care of you. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. It's not just a song. It's reality in my life. He takes care of me and of you. When someone gives you the blessing and says shalom, it means completion. And every aspect of your life, sin doesn't dominate. Yes, there are temptations, but you are greater than temptations. There is the power of the Holy Spirit in your and my life and brings victory into your life. Temptation doesn't need to rule your life. You are free. You are free at last right now. It is the Holy Spirit in your life. It is the words of Jesus on the cross when he said, it is done, it is finished, it is accomplished. You are a complete person when, when you receive Jesus Christ into your life, when you understand that he died for you and now he is risen. Jesus Christ is alive and he tells you, Shalom my friend, Shalom my brother, Shalom my sister, completion. You are totally complete in Him. The next one, there is a fullness. You are not empty. You are not half of the cup. You are full. When God gives blessings of shalom upon your life, when you have Jesus Christ in your life, you are full. I love this. I love this. We have a new hope right now. We have a new zeal to life. I remember one of the old pastors we had here. Actually, he was even our superintendent for a season. Pastor Cole. I remember the years ago when he actually came here. He played even trumpet for us. In those days, we still were a little bit fuller than we are today. So he called me and said, Pastor Mike, yes, I'm coming. But I remember, tell me what's going on on the 20 because I know I'm there in age, but I'm still full of zeal. I say, yes, 20, you have to drive 55, my brother. And I did. I said, oh, okay, okay, I understand. But he was trying to remind me that I'm still full of zeal. And I remember every time when I say zeal, I'm thinking about Pastor Glenn Hall. How about that? And I did. Are you full of zeal? Are you full of that understanding right now? Then my God, I have fullness in Christ Jesus. And one more. That's the kind of one that we need to advertise it and underline every day. It's soundness. 
soundness. How many people are sick right now? I just talked with someone else, one of our, well, I used to preach there all the time in Cleveland, Ohio, and for that matter, I married that couple like this. And that couple had a sister, he had a sister like this. Again, the same, 50 years old, like this. 50 years old. And she struggled with that word. What was the word I just said? Somebody remind me. Sound. Soundness. <coughs> she went to a psychologist. It just happened one of our pastor's wife was professional psychologist. She looked at her and spent a few moments with her and said, you don't need psychologists, you need psychiatrists. And she said, oh no, I'm never gonna go to a psychiatrist. They're gonna lock me in the room and I will lose my freedom. And then her mother passed away. Remember, she's just 50 years old. Oh. That's the today's situation. Her mother passes away, beautiful place. Beautiful, I mean, absolutely gorgeous, everything. And my people are reminding her, remember now you're responsible for all the bills. You have to pay each month, like this. So she makes a joke, she says, oh, I can jump to the river. Or she actually said, I will jump to the river. And for a moment, she disappears. Nobody hears about her. And suddenly neighbors are smelling a funny smell. Nobody knew what to do. They had to call the police. Police had come, destroyed the front door, and here she is, dead for so many days. They are not able to recognize her. Why? Sound mess. Did you hear what I just said? Sound mess. She would not even hear when somebody else was telling her in a good, in a good heart, in a good spirit. But she lost her life for no reason. But when somebody comes and says, Shalom to you, it means I'm blessing you with God's soundness. And you cannot have a peace without receiving Jesus Christ into your life. My brother, my sister, Thank God for yesterday, but today, how is your relationship with Him? Today, are you strong? Today, can you understand that you belong to Him? Today, can you hear the words, Shalom? There are nine different characteristics that are in the word, Shalom. And that's what He's saying. When He appears after the resurrection, He stands right there when they're all together with the doors locked of course and Jesus comes and he greets them he's blessing them right now and what does he say shalom peace be with you for the sake of translation we just use one word so in essence what he says may you be blessed with safety May you be blessed with the rest. May you be blessed with the prosperity. May you be blessed with the wholeness. May you be blessed with the completion there. May you be blessed with the fullness, hallelujah. May you be blessed with the soundness. Don't take things into your own hands. Let God, let God, let God rejoice in you right now. Hallelujah. We will be. Are you okay this morning? My brother, my sister, are you okay this morning? Do you have a peace in your heart? I want us to pray right now. Because all of this which you're hearing right at the end right now, it's only this one word. Shalom. And look what God is doing here. Jesus appeared to the disciples. But he also appears right now in your and my life. All of that in his sacrifice. 
all of that blessing now Jesus gives to his disciples and today he gives to us we are his disciples this morning and there's only one part one part and that part is so simple to learn you and I are here to learn what exactly it means and now we know it's more than the word peace that I say everything is involved in that right now so I want you to ask and we're gonna open the altar for a moment right now we still have plenty of time right now I want you to come right now and say I'm gonna make an aim right now you know aim you just you're just shooting at something you're aiming at something right now I want to have that kind of a shalom of the Lord and what it means right now Holy Jesus. 